Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Joni Young and today I'm going to be showing you step by step how to paint this acrylic painting titled Winter Blessings. This is one that you guys are going to learn a ton of brush strokes and tips and techniques that are going to take you further as an artist and help you along the way with all of your landscape paintings. Um, it's also really pretty um, with the colors that we're using today so be sure to look below the video for a full list of all the colors and brushes the size of canvas and links to Patreon, Instagram, and a Facebook group where you guys can share your versions from my tutorials. I love to see them. So I've got this 9x12 canvas. I painted it black, just regular um, black paint, and I let it dry. And I've got a number 12 flat brush here, neon yellow warm, pink, and orange. I'm just going to start pulling and spreading it across the sky, alternating with a little bit more of each or less of each color. Um, alongside a little bit of my titanium white so this way I'm getting all these different streaks and shades of all the colors so not just one solid color if that makes sense this is how you create a beautiful natural looking sunset when you don't mix your colors up on the palette so just take a little scoop of each that's my secret tip for you guys if you want a beautiful natural looking painting with a lot of uh, feeling to it and mood then just take a little scoop of each color and start pulling it and blending it along the canvas and you'll get that natural organic look and it's going to be really really pretty and look like you spent hours on it so I'm just going to continue along I'll add it down below where we're going to have our water and just pull side to side back and forth simple easy brush strokes and then we'll work on our next step and I do want to mention that you can paint this on a white canvas as well. The reason why I choose black is because it makes for a very striking painting. It creates a lot of depth um, naturally and quickly. So you don't have to add too many shadows because you've got that dark base to begin with. Um, and you can paint this on any size canvas that you want. I'm also going to just start to pick up, without washing my brush off, a little bit of my light blue violet. And if you don't have this color, you can just take ultramarine blue and mix a little bit of white with it until you get the um, light blue color that you want. Maybe a bit darker than this and maybe a little bit lighter than this. I'm going to lighten mine with a little bit of white and just start to pull and smear it across the canvas. Now I'm painting wet on wet. This works best for getting um, a multitude of shades and tones. If you wait too long for your paint to dry, it may be a little bit different looking. It's not going to be um, bad or anything. It's just going to be different. So if you get a little frustrated and wonder why yours isn't um, blending and you're not getting as many tones, um, it's that's why is because your paint is drying quickly. Um, if you want a tip for keeping your acrylics from drying out too fast, you can have the temperature turned down a little bit lower. You don't have to freeze in your studio, um, but just have it um, just a little bit um, cooler than room temperature. If it's too warm, obviously that's going to speed up your uh, drying time and make it, make it a little bit frustrating to keep up with. Um, but if you also have a little spray bottle on hand, like a fine misting bottle, just a little bit of water and make sure it's a fine mist. You can um, mist your palette and I wouldn't mist the painting because that's going to create little uh, water specks and droplets on your painting and it's actually going to ruin your painting. So keep it away from your painting. Um, but I do add a little bit of water to my brush sometimes if I'm having trouble pulling and blending it and spreading it around. But not very often. I don't use a lot of water in my paintings and I don't use any other medium. That's a question I get asked quite often. Um, but there's nothing wrong with using a medium. And for those of you that take a little longer to paint and your acrylics um, dry too quickly, then by all means try um, a medium. It's a slow drying medium. It makes your acrylics act more like oils. You can find that at many, many fine art stores, including Michael's and on Amazon. So now I've got all those colors down on my canvas. I think it's looking really pretty. The next color I'm going to add is my Mars Black. I do want to mention about Mars Black. Uh, it dries. It's like lamp, lamp black. So it dries with um, a gloss finish. So keep that in mind. Um, and you can look for matte uh, finishes to your black paint when you're purchasing it. 
but if you didn't know that, now you do. Don't be surprised. So if you don't want that uneven um, shimmer and finish to your paintings, right? If it's all glossy, that's fine. But um, you don't want one part of your painting to be shiny and the other matte. Or maybe you do. I mean, that can look cool. It's whatever you want. But just so that you guys know that. Um, I kind of forgot when I uh, added the black. But um, luckily, I've got some high gloss varnish and sealer that I'm going to add to this uh, little painting once it's all done. And then it'll all be even and all look the same, um, have the same shine to it. So I'm just going to add a little bit more of my colors now. I gave a few minutes for my um, first layer of paint to set into the canvas a bit and dry. And working on a black canvas, uh, it's going to take a little bit more white to make your highlights show up. Um, the black kind of overpowers, and even if you use gesso, which I did beforehand, uh, it'll still uh, dry a little bit darker, and acrylic does in general, so it's going to be even more so working on a black canvas. So just have the patience and enjoy the process of adding more highlights whenever you need to, which me might be quite often. Um, and I want to mention the neon paints that I'm using today are by Holbein. You can get them on Amazon and certain fine art stores. Um, uh, unfortunately, Michael's doesn't carry them. That's the one art store I go to quite often in the city, but it doesn't carry Holbein. Um, there are lots of fine art stores that do carry them. And they're really beautiful um, neon paints to work with. But I just want to go over some of the techniques I'm, I'm applying right now. So with a water, when you want to create water and reflective look, you want to do brush strokes back and forth, but also up and down. So you'll see me kind of drop, pull, and flick very lightly and gently. If yours isn't looking soft and blended, and if it's not effortless like this, then just get a little bit of water on your brush. So all that means is that you're just helping. The little bit of water will help release the paint how you want it to. Um, but if your paint is still wet underneath, then you won't need that water. But that's all I do. Instead of going back for more paint, if that happens, I go back for a little bit of water. And now I'm going to take, um, yeah, so I'm starting to work on the reflections and that kind of mirrored like uh, reflection in the water from all of the land, trees and bushes above. So now I'm going to come in, still using my flat brush here. I've got a little mixture of my black with my light blue violet. Uh, it makes for a beautiful bluey slate gray color. And I'm just kind of tapping in there and then sliding my brush around. So... That just makes it really, really low and gives that perspective, right? Wherever you um, build up and give height in your painting is going to make it look a little bit uh, closer to us in the foreground. Uh, unless you've got some really big mountains in the distance. But in this case, we don't. In this painting, it's just uh, this beautiful mirrored lake with a sunset and a few trees. Um, and it's more about what I really wanted to create in this painting was uh, that soft, uh, the soft feels of winter, even though winter is really cold. Um, and sometimes, you know, you just don't want to go outside. It's cold and you think it's miserable outside, but you look out the window and then you get the most beautiful sunsets and sunrises in the winter and the colors, the snow takes on that beautiful blue, like the blue violet we have here. And then with some silhouette trees and shadows with the, that black against the vibrant sky of all those warm colors, the heat of the colors, it can, winter can be very beautiful. So I've got some uh, nice memories of growing up in the Rockies where I used to live and we had a beautiful, or there's a beautiful river there and it's called the uh, Columbia River. And this is really what it looks like. So that's what I'm going by right now is just kind of off of memory and I'm going to just build up this blue right here. First layer of course was that slate gray, the mixture of the blue and the black and I'm going to come over and I'm going to use a thick amount of paint. So see right there is this really really thick heavy body paint and this is from this light blue violet is acrylic uh, basics Liquitex. Uh, it's a really nice one, but I have to say my favorite brand in the light blue violet is by Golden Acrylics. Can't beat it. It's just beautiful. It looks like velvet. Dries like velvet. It's very matte and like powdery and chalky looking. 
um, so you can see how thick it is and at times I'm using my flat brush just by scraping it gently across the canvas that way I get that natural texture that will kind of make it look icy and rocky and a little bit more edgy looking and give it more of a 3d look and then sometimes you'll notice around here I'll be using my brush kind of just on the flat like on the underneath side the same way you would use a palette knife so you could use a palette knife for this uh, part of the painting as well I don't often use palette knives um, I just really I've tried and I've played around with them and had fun with them but I prefer the feel of a brush um, it just works uh, better for me it's my it's just personal preference but I like to let you guys know where it would be appropriate and definitely doable if you like to use palette knives Now I haven't washed my brush out too many times. I always like to have a little hint of the other color left in my brush. Um, in this case, I've got that blue with a little bit of slate gray, but I'm picking up quite a scoop of titanium white and I'm gonna make it really thick again. Sort of mix it up a little bit, but not too much. And then just apply, just kind of skim over really lightly, barely touching that canvas. If you push too hard, uh, because the paint underneath is wet, what you're going to do is just push that paint right off. So less pressure when painting wet on wet. Now I'm going to add a few beautiful sweeping clouds in these cool blue tones. Then I'm going to mix in a little bit of my neon pink. And we're going to get this dusty rose, kind of a violet color. And I thought this would be a nice accent to add. We've got a little bit of it over there on the left you can see in the sky. And I thought it, that looked kind of pretty. So... I wanted to play around with my colors and see how many different shades I can make with what I've got on my palette there. There's there's actually a lot to work with. And if you guys are curious about um, alternatives for the neon paints, don't worry at all. You don't have to have neon paints to create this. There's lots of bright colors that are non-neons that you can work with. So just look for your brightest pinks, reds, oranges, yellows, and you can go from there and then make the softer tones by mixing in a little bit of white. Whatever white you want to use is up to you. I really like the clean um, pastel bright colors I get by using titanium white because it's a cool white and it's the brightest. I'm switching over to a small um, filbert brush here now. Um, it's got a round end to it, so it's gonna be much easier for me to create the sun, obviously, than using that big flat brush. I'm using my neon yellow warm to start my sun, the base of my sun, and a little bit around the sun, and then I'm gonna add some in the water. I'm gonna go inside and soften that, make it really, really bright by adding titanium white. No water at all, just straight paint. Most of this painting, I'd say 99% of this painting, 99.9% .9 of this painting is full on, full strength paint and heavy body paint. Um, so I'll let you guys know when I'm using a little bit of water. And I think you're able to tell as well, like when the paint is really, really thin and kind of watery looking. And that comes a little bit later or it's coming up in the painting when I'm adding my branches for my trees. That's when I use a little bit of water and that just helps uh, me create those free flowing little detailed branches with my liner brush. I'm going to add some highlights here to the water and I want to bring um, movement to the water and make it look like it's turning around that corner. So just a really skinny line that veers off to the right side. Again, just with those soft pastel colors. And you can't go wrong with whatever um, colors you want to use. It, there's no right or wrong ratio to the orange, pink, and yellow for the water and the white. Um, so don't try to follow along how much I'm scooping up by each brush stroke I make. That's going to be uh, way too hard. Um, you're just going to look really similar. It might even look um, lighter, like brighter, more vivid. It might look a little bit uh, softer in tone than mine does. Um, and I recommend if you really want to get good at brush strokes and techniques and color mixing um, and a certain painting that you might really like, paint it three times. Three is definitely, is, three times is the charm for sure. So if you paint the same thing three times, you're going to be a pro at it and you're going to learn so much each time you paint it. You're going to just fine tune your skills that way. So don't just try something once and decide if you're good at it 
or not because you really need like anything in life you've got to practice you've got to do something it's repetitive repetition so especially with um, all those ornaments the Christmas ornaments I've been painting I've painted thousands of those and I know you guys are painting quite a few as well because you're sharing all of those uh, photos on the Facebook group and I love them so way to go guys um, your paint, even though they're, they're Christmas ornaments on a round surface, it's even tougher to create uh, a landscape. So you guys are really, really getting better as artists. You're leveling up by doing all those Christmas ornaments. So after adding a few more highlights and colors to the water, I'm going to switch over to one of my angle mop brushes or oval mop brushes. Use any stippler brush mop brush, even a fan or filbert, whatever you've got that you can use as a stippler to create some foliage. All you want to do is just tap, tap, tap. You don't want to pull unless you're pulling for a reflection in the water to make it look kind of blurry. Just directly into the black paint and I'm going to tap lightly, leaving little spaces in between, nothing too, too solid. Um, and then I'm going to add my, my tree trunks and my um, little branches after. So I'm going to add a little bit in the water as well, right below. A few little taps here and there. Even though it's already almost black right there, I want to add just another tap and layer of straight black. That's going to give us a few different shadows going on and reflections and really give it that mirrored look that's going to help this painting look kind of magical. And then a soft and gentle little pull and flick down in the water just underneath uh, that snow, that land right there. And you can, for these smaller areas where you need to be a little bit more careful to help create the perspective, um, so for those lower areas right by the sun on either side of the sun, you can use a smaller brush. I really recommend um, getting a set of all different sizes of mop brushes, oval mops, angle mop brushes, um, but if you can't find them at the art store, um, here's a little... Uh, hint and tip for you guys to look in the makeup section that's where I get my especially on Amazon they've got tons they've got big sets they've got really pretty iridescent crystal handled ones and I've left uh, links for those I don't um, have a store and I'm not affiliated or sponsored by any of the companies but I just recommend them because I want to help you guys paint as well as you can and part of learning how to paint is having um, brushes that work well and they don't have to be expensive so the ones I'm using are not expensive um, but anyways I'm using my mini like micro mini <laughs> um, liner brush here it's a short liner brush and just use any size liner brush that you feel comfortable with I've got 60% water 40% paint sometimes 90% water so black is obviously really, really strong and dominant, so you don't need a lot of the black. Plus, you've got the black underneath that we added with our mop brush. You can pull off of that and use some of that to wiggle around and just create your little wiggly uh, crooked lines for tree trunks and branches. So don't use a lot of pressure. The trick with the liner brush is to just barely touch the canvas and just lightly kind of pull it along. Have a shaky hand. If you're shaky and nervous, it's going to help you make your branches even more natural and delicate looking. Now I'm going to add really instantly and easily, make a few of these trees more in the foreground just by pulling a line down further. So you'll see we'll have one or two trees here that are closer to us. And you just want to make the tree trunk slightly wider at the bottom. And then I'll be pulling off a little line diagonally off to the right at the base of the tree trunk for a shadow. Now our next step after I wash this brush out and I want to remind everybody wash your brushes out in between use because you'll rook and ruin your brushes if you leave your acrylic paint in there even just for a few minutes. Okay so that being said I'm going to go over to my filbert brush again and the size filbert brush I'm using is a two. You could also use a four or five or six and I'm just going to take my white with my warm colors again and just very lightly very delicately pull and flick side to side up and down um, to add a little bit more light and reflection in the water now so you're just going to go over part of your shadows and reflection it's about building up those soft layers and the drier your brush the better the more natural it's going to look so if you look really close up uh, here I'll just zoom in for you okay so now really close up you can see 
all those little areas that look kind of dry, but that is what's going to give, and I mean off to the left a little bit where the brush strokes are over the, the blackish grayish area, that gives you that kind of frosty, cool, wintry look over the water. I'm going to build up the saturation a little bit more, adding a little bit more of my orange, my yellow. I don't have really any pink left, but that's okay. I think I've got enough pink in this painting. And the orange is just a beautiful, beautiful uh, addition to all the other colors going on here. That blue-violet is really complementary with the orange. Um, and the neon yellow warm I'm using is really like... Um, it's kind of, it looks more on the orange side. So if you don't have neon yellow warm, I know a lot of you guys are having a hard time finding the neon yellow warm, um, but you can get it if you get it in the full set of the Holbein neon luminous paints. But if you don't have it, just go for uh, your cadmium yellow warm. You know, you can get yellows, any yellow in warm or cool, right? They go by temperature. So a cool yellow will be more on a, like a yellow side or a green side, I mean, and the warm, yellow will be more on the red side or orange side so there's a tip for you guys if you're not if you're new to painting and you're not really um, knowledgeable about uh, hues and tones and temperatures and colors um, but I've got a mixture of everything going on here the blue uh, I'm doing another layer of blue here and alternating with adding a little bit more white with the blue at times this is going to give us different tones in our cool shadows and give it more of that like uh, cold icy look so it's such the painting is not only complementary in colors it's complementary in warmth and cool so we've got that snow that cold cold snow but then we've got the heat of that beautiful sunset so those colors and I all those colors together I think for me is what really uh, makes me enjoy painting this and um, I, this is one of my favorite uh, color combinations to work with. Uh, you can play up on this color as well, these colors. You could get away with adding a little bit of bright aqua turquoise in a few areas. And you could also use a little bit of purple here and there. I'm just going over and I'm adding another very thin frosty layer, dry brush layer of my light blue violet with a little bit of gray in there. And now I'm going to come in with another mop brush. This is from that full set I was talking to you guys about earlier, makeup brushes. I've got a mini mop brush now, and I'm going to come in and add my layers of frost and snow. So just a, a light tap and stipple. The brush is not wet. I did not get it wet with water first. I just went in straight to load my brush up with the paint. So mostly light blue violet for this. If you pick up a little bit of wet black paint underneath as you're doing this, it's going to look even better because you're creating different tones. So you can see them, right? You can see where it's like brighter blue and where it's kind of that blue and the black meet and blend in together that makes a really gorgeous color. So it's nice to work um, wet on wet if you can. Um, and like I said earlier, if you're just tuning in now and you missed it at the beginning of the video, I talk about how to deal with and keep up with the <laughs> quick drying uh, aspect of acrylics and what you can do to help slow down the drying process and benefits to painting wet on wet. So if you want to keep your studio a little bit cool, just a little bit on the cool side, you don't have to shut the heat right off and freeze while you're in there, but that will really, really help lengthen the um, the drying time of your uh, acrylics. Okay, guys, I've got lots of tips and tricks for you and um, I'll leave some links below, but I'm going to just add a few little taps in the water now. Tap, tap, tap really lightly to create that mirrored look of the trees and then a soft pull up and down and side to side. So very, very gently so you're not making everything kind of blurry. You just want a little bit of everything tapping for that texture that makes it look like the trees above, but then also a few little ripples in the water and that uh, gentle look of all those lines and and even giving it a little bit of a frosty look so i'll finish up by adding another layer of the light blue violet in some areas i'm going to add more and i really want to have that bright blue color like i do um, on the snow in the foreground and right under the sun and then the painting will be almost done i need to go over and just clean up this tree trunk here 
So adding a little bit more black paint. And then I'll add a little highlight and skim of snow on either side of the tree. I'm gonna add just a little bit more blue, a few more layers of blue to finish off this painting before I call it done. And I'm just gonna clean up the edge right down at the bottom. And then to give it more of a, make the trees look more like they have a shadow on either side, I'll just add a little bit of white there in the front. So just by doing this will give you a natural looking shadow, just making the area around it, around them brighter and then right in between, of course, because the light's coming through in between. But my black paint is still wet right there, so I'm, it kind of works out that it looks like a shadow, but I'm just going to clean it up a little bit and make it a little bit, make that shadow look a little bit narrower. Add another layer of my tree reflection in the water. And just using my filbert brush again and make sure you guys look below i'll remind you again look below this video for a full list of the colors and brushes canvas uh, links all of that stuff below the video so just if you just click uh, right under the video it'll pop up and you'll see everything there of course i want to invite you guys to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already join our facebook group patreon where you can get early access and extra content and be part of our monthly painting challenges. I've got some fabulous prizes. A full set of these neon paints is one of them. So just washed my brush off. I want to have a nice clean brush to work with. Tap into my titanium white and very, very gently look at the shape you get from these filbert brushes. They just make the, the most perfect looking foliage and treetops and bushes. I'm just going to add a little tap, tap, tap here and there to give these more frost and highlight and also make them look farther away. So we're really helping to create perspective by doing this. And then I'll work my way out and just add a little bit here and there to the other trees. And what I'm also gonna do is add a little bit of that uh, white that's kind of tinted with the blue now inside some of uh, my clouds. So wherever I have the blue cool shades in the streaks across my sky i'll add just a little bit inside them it'll dry a little bit darker this way i'm sure to get some nice soft um, clouds in the same color that i've got on my highlights down below so everything will just kind of flow nicely together and i'm going to wash my brush off go back in for final layer and a um, little bit more saturation a few wiggles here with my neon yellow warm Give it a little bit more of that ripple and um, movement in the water. I'm going to add just a little bit more in the sky with what's left on my brush. So I'm just going to clean my brush off and get a little bit more of that yellow white with just a little bit of orange in there. I'm going to add a final layer right above uh, the snow in the water here. Very soft brush strokes back and forth with a filbert brush. And then just a little bit up in the sky. I'm going to wash my brush out and I'm going to go in and do my final layer of blue. So no white this time, just straight light blue violet. It's also known as light ultramarine blue. Depends on what brand of paint you're um, purchasing. I'm going to add a little dab and tap here and there for some thicker areas and just to add some more color. Same with the water for the reflection. I did mention earlier in the video how to make this color if you don't have it. Um, so just go back towards the beginning of the video. And this painting is all done. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me today for all of your support here on YouTube, on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and most of all on Patreon. It's you patrons that help me be able to continue making my videos. So I'll leave links below for everything. Have a wonderful day. Stay positive, happy out there, and I'll see you guys all very soon in another video. Bye for now.